Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Real Mushrooms, uh, Facebook Live for Pets, our monthly uh, live Q&A. Uh, my name is uh, Joni Camlet, and I'm with Dr. Rob Silver, uh, the infamous Dr. Rob Silver, uh, who is our chief veterinary officer for Real Mushrooms. Uh, he's a <clears throat> formulator of products, lover of animals, uh, especially cats. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about an issue that I think we get more questions about this than anything else. And it can be a bit of a confusing topic. Um, it's how to figure out the right uh, administration. Uh, I know uh, Rob's going to talk a little bit about why we, we don't want to use the word dosage, but um, uh, we're going to talk about administration uh, of mushrooms uh, for dogs and cats. And so, hey, Rob. Hi, Joni. What's this about me being infamous? <laughs> <laughs> that's a po that's a positive thing, isn't it? People huh? have heard about you. Everybody knows when I people come up to me all the time and they're like, "Oh my gosh, Rob, so Dr. Rob Silver, I watched his video. I took his webinar. I met him at a conference. He was speaking at a conference." Okay. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I saw him on TikTok. <laughs> on TikTok a lot these days. Yeah, that's yeah. what I. <laughs> so um, I guess this is time for me to do my little intro thing, correct? Yep. So, yeah. so mushrooms are really not considered to be drugs um, unless we're isolating one single component for it and, and concentrating it and, and all. But mushrooms are really very um, complex organisms that have a lot of ingredients in them, most of which have beneficial biological effects. Um, so when we, we don't really talk about dosing them because you don't get the same kind of response that you might, if you're using a drug, in fact, we don't, we don't, we call mushrooms biological response modifiers, which means they don't really follow the normal pharmacokinetics of a drug. They, they modify the way the body responds to things. And many mushrooms are also edible as culinary mushrooms. Some are a little bit too woody in their later stages to eat, but actually I, there are reports of them being eaten, like turkey tail, for instance. Um, when it's young, it's kind of softer and can be eaten. Yeah, I know, boil it, boil it a lot. Reishi, even reishi, I've, I've read some stuff about reishi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, um, but, but basically what I'm saying is that um, we give, we give the mushrooms, we administer the mushrooms in order to achieve a certain benefit. And what I've learned from the research and from my work with animals is that depending on the benefit that you want from giving the mushroom, um, you might start with a smaller amount or you might start with a larger amount. But in order to quantify it and make it easier for the pet parent to follow a fairly simple guideline, we put on the labels or we pr provide you with a dosing, a administration guide that gives you some guidance as far as general starting points to use if we're dosing, if we're giving it, if we're administering. See, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. The, the, see, the FDA doesn't want us to make medical claims, although in this context, we can certainly talk about that stuff, but like on labeling and stuff. So we don't want to call mushrooms medicinal. We want to call them functional. If we call them medicinal mushrooms and we talk about them being dosed, the FDA might get a little irritated with us and they might actually tell us to remove those that language from our label or even stop selling the stuff. So we're trying to be very careful because we don't, we want to keep selling the stuff. So, um, so what this means is that um, for most conditions, for, for, for most animals, for most humans, um, giving a, a fairly lower dose, a lower amount of mushrooms on a daily basis is really helpful in terms of training the immunity and building up the health of the animal. And depending on the mushroom, it might build up health in the lungs. If we're talking about cordyceps and all this terrible smoke that's going out there, it might be, um, it might build up health in the liver. If we're talking about reishi, it might build up health, the GI tract, if we're talking about chaga, but we're still talking about using a relatively low amount of each of those mushrooms. We call that the wellness amount. And based on studies that I've read, um, 
I've, I've been able to put a number to that, a way to make it easier for us to figure out how much to give. And so that's that number is on the low end. And I don't need to I don't know unless you want to know what that number is. I'll I'll hold off on that because we're going to come out with a chart that will give you just an immediate reference based on the product you're using, the, the, the product you're using, the uh, the, the, the species of mushroom, which of the which type of product is it? Is it a soft chew? Is it a powder? Is it a, a human capsule? Is it a pet capsule? I mean, there's so many variables. It gets complicated, and then we're going to and then we're going to recommend that as a starting dose for your animal. If you wanted to, if your animal had something more serious than just um, dealing, just trying to create health and wellness in it. Like, let's say we wanted to use the lion's mane to improve cognition. So we might want to use a larger amount. So we're going to say that the starting amount would be this. If you want to, if you want to increase it, you can increase it two times and get um, a good amount for more clinically relevant tasks like cognition or or um or reduction in pain or um improvement of um uh antihistamine benefit if it's an allergy and then if you're going to an even more serious condition the ultimate condition that most people um that, that causes most people to think about mushrooms maybe for the first time would be when your pet gets that terrible diagnosis of cancer then we look for an even higher dosage because the studies show that dosage is probably three times higher, you know, or even more than that, than that baseline dosage amount. I keep seeing, I, I'm guilty yeah. too. Saying do, it's so much easier to say dosage than dosage. Um, yeah. amount to administer. The administration guideline is this. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so that's, so, so that's basically the way it is. And, and because each animal's individual, each animal has a different weight, each animal has a different need for it. Um, it's not etched in stone that this is what you give, yeah. this is what you give, this is what you give. It's it's very flexible. And and for those of you out there who, who need to have the security of a number, it's okay, but please don't obsess over it. Because mushrooms are very safe, they're safe yeah. at any speed. We're not going to give too yeah. many. We don't really worry that much about interactions. If anything, we see positive interactions versus yeah. negative interactions. The negative interactions we see are very rare and usually are very individual to that patient, that patient's problem. So, so really, I would say let's, let's be more casual about our dosing and just know that we're going to be giving a, a good starting amount or we're going to take that starting amount because we're more concerned about the condition and bump it up by two or three times or bump it up even more if it's even more serious. And, and that's, that's basically a guide to how much to give. And then the more important guidance is to give it daily, right. continuously for a substantial period of time, hopefully for the life of the animal. You might switch from one mushroom to another, or one grouping of mushrooms to another, as your as your as your as your pet's health condition evolves or changes or devolves. But basically, that's kind of what we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's great. That's that's uh, that's a wonderful overview, uh, Doc Rob. And you know, I love what you talk. It really is. There's such a wide uh, such a, a wide safety range with mushrooms and you know it's great like you know uh you put the you put the product together we had to put something on the bottle we had to put some sort of guideline and so often we get you know okay you know it says well 20 to 40 pounds but my dog's 10 pounds and you know it's really okay to give that capsule you know the, the one capsule to a 10 to a 10 pound dog even though you know it might seem you know, because 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 of that wide range, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and talking about how you should continue to give the mushroom, in particular, like I'm thinking of uh, lion's mane, where if you're giving lion's mane for an animal with uh, a cognitive issue, I mean, the studies have shown that uh, lion's mane can, you know, in, uh, in, at least in humans, uh, improve cognitive function. But when they stopped taking the lion's mane, they went back to baseline. So, and in those studies, how long did it take for them to start to see some changes from the lion's mane and cognition? It was several weeks to a month. Yeah, I think it was six weeks, and then the and then six weeks after they stopped taking the lion's mane, 
they went back to where they were before uh, before starting it. So, you know, that's kind of a uh, a good example of like Alliance Mint. You live the mushrooms. Uh, they're you know, and for the most part, not acute use products. They work best over the long term, and you know, they're often they're they're wonderful lifelong uh, products. And we have a question for uh, from for your animals' health. Um, so why don't we just get right into it? Um, First, I want to make a comment on what you yeah, said. Sure. Of course. Which is that because the mushrooms aren't drugs and because they're very safe, you know, if you're the sort of person that really wants to follow the numbers, mm -hmm. the numbers tell you it's half a capsule or it's one and a half capsules or something like that. There's no reason why you can't open a capsule. Yeah. Go half in there. Or, you know, if we have a soft chew, no reason why you can't tear it in half. It doesn't have to be exact because the, the mushrooms are so forgiving. And we're and if it's a powder formula, same there. Instead of a quarter teaspoon, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe a half a teaspoon. So yeah. it's 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 pretty casual. Okay, now I'm ready for the question. No, and now I have a comment to your comment, which to follow up to that because it's a good reminder, uh, uh, Doc Rob, that also starting Small is so important, especially if you have an animal that's never taken mushrooms before. You don't want to cause any uh, digestive upset or uh, diarrhea. So, you know, if there's nothing wrong with starting with a very small dose and working your way up, uh, just knowing that, you know, depending on what issue you're dealing with, you can go a lot higher than what it says on the bottle. Is that is that correct? <laughs> Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to move into the question from uh, For Your Animal's Health, who says, my 80-pound rot Dobie mix, who's been on five defenders regularly and some cordyceps and lion's mane. I found out last week he has a small new mast cell tumor. Uh, what dosage can I go up to until and after surgery? And since the MCT is a histamine related, I want to make sure I'm using the best product for that issue. Okay, this is the best product for that issue. Um, five defenders, um, we consider it to be uh, a minimum of 20% um, beta glucans. And um, here I'm just going to give individual amounts there. If we have 80 pounds, that would be, because I like to use kilograms in my measurements, that would be about 36 kgs. Let's just make it easy for math because we're not, as I mentioned with these, they're not really super precise. They're not dangerous drugs. We'll just call it 40 kgs, makes the math easy. And um, so we would take the 40 kgs and we would multiply it by 30 mg per kg, which would be the high end dosage for cancer. And I get 1.2 grams of beta glucans. So um, since the... Um, five defenders and you say you take the five defenders as well or i think maybe you're taking the pouch let's just assume it's the pouch so if it's the pouch half a teaspoon is a thousand milligrams or 200 um um 200 milligrams of beta glucans so that means you would use three times as much to get um, six times as much to get 1200 milligrams of beta glucan so that would be three teaspoons or a tablespoon a day of the five defenders it's quite a bit of powder um, and it may be a bit bitter for your roddy depending on how they're feeling um, so i would say first of all start maybe at a third of that so instead of doing six do do um do um uh, six half teaspoons do one teaspoon to start to make sure that the dog is doing okay um and you can divide that you know over th three th twice a day or three times a day if it's easier for your dog to take that much powder now if you're using capsules the the, the math is a little different but not that much different each half a, each um human sized capsule is the same as a quarter teaspoon so that means you would want to do um, 12 capsules. That gets to be quite a bit for that large dog with that high end dosage. Mm -hmm. But we, but um, which is why the powder is probably the, the best way to go for a large dog with a very high dosage like that. The pet capsules are even smaller. They're 300 milligrams, which means that there would be 60 milligrams per capsules. That's 20 capsules per day, which is quite a bit so I, so hopefully you've got the powder i would try the powder first because it would be the easiest to get compliance 
And you know, it may, you may not need to go to the very high dosage. Most mast cell tumors are not you know, malignant. They're not going to spread. They're not causing a problem. The, to know whether what you have is a more aggressive type of mast cell tumor, we recommend that you send that into the laboratory for, um, for grading. So then you can know, well, these are pretty safe mast cell tumors. We don't need to use that super high dosage. We could use a slightly lower dose. You can probably still get good antihistaminic and immune system function out of the dosing. Awesome. Uh, yes, and, uh, and uh, they, uh, they say that uh, they have the powder. So you were correct in your assumption, uh, uh, Doc Rob. Yeah, so that's uh, well, that's good. So yeah, and start low. You may not even need to go that high, but that's how high I would go in terms of dosing an individual dog using the math calculations that that I as a veterinarian like to use. But we're trying to make it simpler. We got a chart we're working on that will help to summarize these things and make it easier for you to figure things out yourself without. Yeah, yeah. Hope that helps, and uh, best of luck with that with that MCT. Um, so we're going to move on to the next question from Linda. Hi, Linda. It's good to see you here. Who says, my dog is 15 years old, weighs 14.7 pounds. In 2020, a mass in his spleen was measured at 1.4 by 1.68. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a, imagine, is that centimeters? Um, in 2021, it grew 1.4 by 2.2, so it grew. In May 2023, 20, uh, it grew 3.95 by 4.25. Uh, in 2020, a, a fine needle aspiration was done, finding no cancer cells. He has sterile nodular paniculitis, which is an autoimmune condition since 2019. He's been on and off of prednisolone. He has an enlarged liver due to the long-term use of pred prednisolone protein urea due to cysts on his kidney. I ordered five defenders, turkey tail and lion's mane. What dosage would I be using? Wow. Okay. Well, a seven kilogram dog. Um, I'm not quite sure. We, since the, the mass on the spleen was not cancerous, um, we probably don't need to use the super high dosage like we were just discussing. Um, the uh, immune mediated um, dermatitis might respond to some of the mushrooms there. Um, and um, the, we have kidney cysts as well. So um, I probably use um, a, a moderate dosage in which we um, used um, maybe um, 10 mg um, per kg which would be about 70 milligrams per day total. So don't know if you've got the capsules or the powders. Um, if you're in a smaller dog, oftentimes people go for the capsules because it's, it's, they're familiar with that. And sometimes smaller dogs are a little more picky about powders in their food too. It's just been my experience. Maybe that's not true for your dog, Linda. So, um, so 70 um, milligrams of beta-glucans per day, the five defenders in the 300 milligram capsule um, has 60 milligrams right there. So yeah. one 300 milligram capsule of that. And um, I would just go ahead and give one capsule of each of those a day. Mm -hmm. But I think that would give you more than enough beta-glucans and should help to, prov if, 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 if the mushrooms can help to support the many problems that your pet's health seems to have, then I think that would be a, a good place yeah. to try that. Um, and I would probably defend, divide them into maybe two capsules in the morning and one capsule at night, or if he's resistant to that, then one capsule three times a day. Yeah. Great advice, Doc Rob. So Linda, uh, I hope that helps you determine uh, where to get started here and uh, best of luck to you yeah. and yeah. your pup. Yeah. Let me say one more thing, though. Yeah, sure. Um, which is probably going to be disappointing to Linda, mm -hmm. um, which is that, in my opinion, the best mushroom to use for kidney problems is cordyceps. So next time you order, um, add the cordyceps or maybe yeah. substitute the cordyceps for the um, 
the turkey tail because it doesn't seem like we've got cancer. The lion's mane can help with the GI stuff and GI stuff often helps with skin stuff. So I'd go with five defenders, cordyceps and lion's mane. There's already turkey tail in the five defenders. So, but you know, no problem. Next, next in the order, just, you know, add, bring, add the cordyceps and maybe um, delete the turkey tail. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was thinking that too. And um, yeah, and Linda, I mean, there's no reason to, to you know, jump online and, and order the cordyceps right away. These are great mushrooms. And, you um, know, think of this as, a you know, think of mushrooms as kind of a, a lifelong uh, uh, support uh, for your dog. And so you're going to go through the bottle and next time you order, you can just, uh, you can just add uh, cordyceps in the mix, like Doc Silver said. Um, yeah. So the, uh, the next question uh, from a Facebook user, uh, what is the, mu uh, the best mushroom for environmental allergies? My dog is a miserable 48 pound Dalmatian. Oh, allergies are bad right now. Yeah, well, um, sorry about that. And um, hopefully you're trying some other options as well to control those symptoms, which can be pretty rough. Um, antihistamines like Benadryl can be very effective or Zyrtec, which doesn't have the drowsiness of um, Benadryl. Um, you know, looking at fish oils and some other options um, for environmental allergies. But for a 48 pound Dalmatian, which um, would be um, approximately 20, 20 kegs, 22 kegs, um, I would suggest the five defenders um, which has two mushrooms in it that have antihistamine effects, as well as, you know, immune modulation, which may help to regulate the allergies a little more. Um, depending which product you wanted to use, you wanted to go to a capsule or a, a larger capsule or a powder, you know, um, just looking at the um, capsules alone, um, 48 pounds, 20 kgs times 10 is 200 milligrams. So that would be um, 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 the, the five defenders capsules would be 60 milligrams. So that would be like three capsules a day of the, of the pet labeled capsule. If you were doing the human labeled capsule, um, then um, you would just need two of those instead of three. And if you were doing the uh, powder, you would um, use a, um, um, uh, I'm getting the numbers all confused. Oh, okay. But um, if, if you're, um, you would be using um, a, a half a teaspoon would have 200 milligrams of beta glucans in it. Sorry for the, the brain for it. <laughs> no worries. I don't know how you like, you have, you must have like a giant calculator back there behind the screen because my <clears throat> I just get confused when I hear the numbers and the, the mix per kg and I think a lot of us are in that uh, that situation so we appreciate you you know just trying to do math and talk at the same time is pretty darn impressive I've been, you know, I've, been a, I've been a vet for 40 years I've been doing this for 40 years I've had a little bit of practice yeah yeah um, so uh, the next one from a Facebook uh, user um, hi, we love your products. Thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, my 70, 70 pound Samoid has a rare autoimmune disease, uh, VKH, which I don't, uvio dermatologic syndrome. Yeah, which that's not really seen in ketis. It's a, it's basically a, a nail bed autoimmune disease. Oh, wow. Um, which mushroom option would you recommend? We have done five defenders and now we're on turkey tail. Uh, I believe this is considered a severe issue. So with autoimmune, we want to be careful about not using too high of a dosage, um, at least at first, because we're not quite certain how the immune system is going to react to anything new that goes into the body, even something that might be beneficial. The immune system might decide for some reason that it doesn't like it and reacts and gets more, gets worse versus better. So um, the one, one mushroom that I, I think is a single mushroom that I would recommend for this would be the reishi. But um, the five defenders, which contains the reishi and a number of other 
mushrooms is fine to use, you know, instead of just the reishi alone. Um, the turkey tail, um, it's okay. I, I really reserve the turkey tail more for anti antiviral infections or anti-cancer process, that sort of thing. Okay. So I think the five defenders or reishi as a single mushroom would be the best way to go for your 70-pound um, samoyed. So at 70 pounds, let's just say that's 35 kegs, and um, we want to give about, um, we want to start, you know, low. So that would be, um, where's my calculator? <laughs> I can't do that in my head. You should fun. have some background music that I play while you're calculating. <laughs> and we should have a little like um, a little bubble, like, you know, on there, like with your brain, the thinking. Uh... <laughs> so that would be about 175 milligrams of beta glucans to start with, which divided by the, um, um, I don't know, the, oh, what did I just say it was <laughs> 35 times five is uh 35 times 5 is um, 175. So if we're using the um, the um, five defenders in a powder, then um, um, then a quarter of a teaspoon would be good there. That'd be about, um, um, let's, no, I'm sorry, a half a teaspoon would be right. That'd be about 200 milligrams of the um, five defenders. And um, that would be about the same amount as the reishi as well. They're very similarly um, um, similarly potent. Um, so that's what I would do. And I would give that lower dosage to begin with at least a month um, and make sure that you're not seeing a worsening of the condition. And then you can experimentally try to double that to increase it and see if you'll get a better response if you're not satisfied with the response you're getting. These autoimmune conditions are extremely difficult to deal with. And it may be that a mushroom is not enough to, to completely deal with it. I had a I had an autoimmune condition of my own um, that actually affected my nail beds very much like affecting your dog. Maybe it's Akita, because that's the breed we commonly see these in. Um, and I used a supplement that's related to cannabis, but is naturally occurring in the body called PEA or palmitoyl ethanolamide. And um, it took a while. It takes, it, it. I mean, these are long standing diseases. It probably took a couple of years on that, plus high doses of fish oil and mushrooms and CBD and everything else for me to finally go into remission. So it's complicated and it takes time. Be patient and go slowly. If you go too aggressively, you're liable to get things to flare up. Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. And let us know if it helps. Uh, I'd be curious to hear if the mushrooms, if you noticed a difference uh, with the mushrooms. Um, <clears throat> so our next question, uh, another Facebook user. Um, oh, I'm uh, I'm giving Five Defenders Powder, a uh, human product to my cats, uh, Gracie after surgery to boost immunity and Belle for allergies. Uh, one eighth to a quarter teaspoon per day. Is this the right amount? Uh, the cats are 10 pounds and six and a half pounds. Okay, well, I think this is a good example um, of the of, of the wide range of dosing that we can give. So that's quite a bit of beta glucans. And if that's the five defenders powder and a half a teaspoon um, contains 200 milligrams, a quarter teaspoon contains 100 milligrams. Um, if you take your standard five kilogram cat, which is kind of a little bit bigger than both of yours, um, and you dose that at a moderate amount, you would get 25 milligrams, you know, as compared to the 100 milligrams. So you're giving a slightly higher dosage. I don't think that it's going to be a problem. I'm pleased to hear that these cats will be accepting of this powder because it can be a bit um, difficult for some cats to accept the bitterness. In fact, it's difficult for me to accept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... I'm happy that uh, that uh, Gracie and Bell are, are are eating the five defenders powder. That's uh, that's yeah. fantastic. I think eight to quarter teaspoons fine. You're doing good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Is there such thing as too much when it comes to dosing my dogs and cats? That's a great question. Well, yes, if it causes them diarrhea in higher dosages. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if 
you are on a budget and you'd rather spend less money on your mushrooms when they don't need as many. It's kind of that thing we talk about supplements, you know, creating expensive urine. But at the same time, as Joni and I discussed earlier today on a podcast, it's probably better to to give a little more than needed than a little less just to make sure you're going to get some effectiveness of it. So, but in terms of safety, in terms of anything else, no. I don't think there, there's no evidence in any of the published reports and any of the anecdotal reports of medicinal mushrooms that have been used for centuries causing problems like that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I we never get, I mean, we get tons of feedback and we really don't get feedback about, you know, <clears throat> you know, any, any severe, uh, severe reactions. Having said that, you know, anything can cause anything, you know, animals are not all the same. So, uh, you know, uh, there can be a rare allergy that an animal has just like, uh, you know, we can have, uh, certain mushrooms that just don't, don't work for us. I, for instance, I, I, I will, I take a ton of mushrooms. I can't take cordyceps. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't work in my system. Okay. So I avoid it. Um, but there's nothing wrong. Everyone else seems to love cordyceps. So there you go. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks to Jordan, who uh, is our customer service manager, and she's kind of behind the screen. Uh, she's the one that's putting the questions up on the screen, and we couldn't do this without her. Um, so Jordan uh, put up, uh, should, can I up the dosage for a dog with cancer? If so, by how much? Well, I guess to answer that question, I'd know I I I'd need to know what you're giving in order to know wow. how much to up it. Yeah. But basically, um, yes, we do recommend higher doses um, for cancer, and um, I would say you could very safely double or triple your dosage if you're using one of the lower starting dosages that we have on the bottles. You know. Um, yeah. And, and I think you can, you know, um, be comfortable with that. Um, once we do issue this dosing guide, it may be more a, a specific for your needs to look at that. And then, and then what we're going to do is, is establish a baseline starting dosage. And then you could multiply that by two or three or more for moderate problems or more severe problems, you know, things yeah. like antihistamine versus cancer, that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I have to say, I, I had a look at a sneak peek at Dr. Silver's dosage chart he's working on. I uh, got a look at kind of the rough draft of it today, and it's really exciting. I think it's going to be extremely helpful. Somebody wrote, so glad you're coming out with the chart. We all need it. And yes, we do. And, you know, just so you know, in the meantime, um, if you, you know, have an issue, if hopefully this Facebook Live is going to help you. But if you want more information in our Facebook for Pets page, um, if you go to Facebook, uh, Real Mushrooms uh, for Pets Facebook page, and you click on the files, there's two different dosage charts uh, in there. There's a basic one and then kind of a more, a little bit more complicated one where uh, Dr. Rob dosed by MIGs per kigs and how many uh, milligrams of beta-glucans are in the powders versus the capsules, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> if you're like, kind of a, a math nerd and really like to go deep, uh, you can go in there and kind of, uh, that's also an excellent chart, but the one that's coming out is gonna be a lot more simple uh, and user-friendly. So um, next question, I have a 60 pound, uh, 63 pound dog with a history of thyroid cancer. A mass was surgically removed and he is now taking reishi and cordyceps pet capsules from raw mushrooms, wondering about a dosage amount for him. Those are those are very good choices for that condition. By the way, I want to I want to um, appreciate. Yes, absolutely. So that's a 28, 29, let's say thirty kilogram dog, and the reishi and cordyceps both have the same percentage of beta glucans in them, which is twenty five percent. So um, the pet capsules have um, three um, hundred milligrams in them total. So at, um, at 30 kgs times, um, let's just go with 10, we get um, 300 migs um, of beta-glucans. So that would be, um, 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 sorry, 
Um, so it's um, 25 times 300 is 75 milligrams per capsule of each of those. So that's divided by 75, that's four. So yeah, so, so probably what you would wanna do is give um, a capsule of each in the morning and a capsule of each at night. And I think that should be sufficient in terms of that dosage. That's at the bottom of the end of cancer dosing. So you could go three times higher and still be within the range of dosing. But I would start there. Um, maybe you're already getting that much. So yeah. you could then ask, increase that. But it's always good to start low. You don't really want to, you know, I found as a vet that, you know, at first I was really aggressive about giving, you know, the optimal dosages. And then I'd get a call that evening, you know, which interrupting my dinner or whatever that the dog had diarrhea on the carpet they were very oh, upset. Yeah. so now so and as i've learned because i like to have my dinners as uninterrupted as possible to <laughs> you know, warn people to start lower just because you never can really some dogs you could predict because they get diarrhea just at looking at something yeah. you know but but some dogs you can't predict so always start low and work your way up over time there's yeah. there's there's no hurry. The people that are that that want to just rush and get it right away and start as high a dosage as they can, that's great. But you're still not going to get those effects for several weeks. And if you're yeah. talking about serious things like cancer, autoimmune disease, stuff like that, things that are really dug deep into the body, start problems. Yeah. Yeah. So please don't ruin Doc Rob's dinner by giving too many mush too many mushrooms too soon. Let's let's let you get your meal and not and not bring diarrhea into uh, into the meal. <laughs> I've given up on dinner for tonight, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what's what's next? Uh, uh, there we go. Um, so, have you heard of this syndrome that I can't that I can't pronounce? I have never heard of it. I don't, I don't know. know if this. I'm yeah. I. Um, Let's move on to the next one. Um, Maybe they can tell us what that is. Yeah. Um, uh, any information regarding Chaga for diabetic cats? Uh, he's still insulin dependent, but very healthy and takes turkey tail, maitake, and reishi daily um, and was healed uh, from a mouth tumor using them. Fantastic. Well, all mushrooms have a, a nice glucose regulating effect. Um, so, um, but I don't have any specific information about chaga and cats. We have so little experience with it that we've not heard anything from the many people that we correspond with that use our products and that use them in cats. Um, I think, you know, the, um, the turkey tail, the maitake and the reishi, particularly the maitake and reishi, I think have been shown to have very good um, um, uh, ability to help regulate um, type one and type two diabetes. Um, many cats are type two diabetes, which also means that you can, some cats will actually go back to being normal if you just change their diet. The, um, the dry food that we feed cats is really high in carbohydrates. And there's some good evidence, very good evidence that eating those many carbohydrates for a cat who is a strict carnivore can cause them to become diabetic, which you can usually reverse by changing the diet back to a primarily high protein, animal protein sort of diet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just impressed that again, another cat and the cat is uh, taking turkey tail, maitake and reishi, which is very impressive. <laughs> um uh, so, uh, now let's take that one off, uh, Jordan. That, yeah. Uh, so, uh, thanks for answering, uh, my question. Uh, this disease affects mostly skin pigmented area and eyes. She was on five defenders for a year. Unfortunately, we, uh, the names are coming up as Facebook users, so we don't know. Do you know who to attach this question? EKH, UVO dermatologic syndrome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, um, I'm glad that uh, you clarified that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next question from Linda. How aggressively do you work your way up to the higher amounts? I would give it a, a period of two to three weeks to work your way up there. Um, unless you've got one of those animals with a cast iron stomach that never has any problems at all in which case it's worthwhile taking that risk. But um, 
I think, you know, I think a couple of weeks is, is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds, that sounds, uh, that sounds like a good, a good plan. Um, next question. My 60 pound dog was diagnosed with surf, soft tissue sarcoma in April. I'm giving her six capsules of human turkey tail and two capsules of the five defenders a day. Do you recommend more or less? Thank you. Um, six human capsules of the turkey tail. That's quite a good dosage. A yeah. And two more of the five defenders. Uh, I think you've done well with that. Yeah. I hope the soft tissue sarcoma will respond. They're kind of, kind of thorny little tumors. They don't really want to go away. Um, you know, you have to surgically remove a lot of tissue around them and sometimes they still come back. So I hope that works for them because the other alternatives aren't any aren't very good for treating them. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so we wish you the best. And again, we always, we love to hear from everybody feedback, you know, uh, like Doc Rob was saying, we often don't hear back. We give out suggestions or whatever. And, uh, you know, we always want to know if they work <laughs> because then that, then that helps us, you know, uh, give advice to other people as well. So um, we wish you the best. Um, do you want to move on to uh, uh, Bridget? Hi, Bridget. Um, I have an 80 pound Doberman. He's almost nine years old. He has no health issues at this time. I started him on five defenders, the human calves, and I give him one in the morning. Should he get more or other mushrooms as well? I think one of those a day is fine um, for, for your um, wellness use of him. I think that, that works fine. Um, you know, the, uh, 80 pounds would be like 40 kegs. And, um, so that would be, you know, maybe like, um, um, a hundred, um, milligrams of beta glucans and the five defender capsule has, um, a, um, um, 500 milligrams times 20 is a um, hundred milligrams in it. So I think that's good. You know, there's no reason why you couldn't give them more, but I think in terms of our numerical figuring here, I think it should be, it should be good for that weight. You know, I don't know your dog, but um, I think it's a good strategy. Yeah. And there's not, you know, you could give two, there's nothing wrong with giving two a day, you know, uh, one a day is fine. Two a day. Um, that's not a, that's not a massive dose for an 80 pound dog. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, thank you, Bridget. And uh, Jordan, I think, why don't we go up to Sherry's? And Sherry has a couple questions. Um, yeah. Hi, Sherry. Uh, she's uh, my dog. Uh, she has, I, I, I wonder if it's a German Shepherd. Um, does not properly absorb. Short hair pointer. Short -hair pointer. Yeah. Well, German Short Hair Pointer. Thank you. Uh, does not properly absorb nutrients. Could you suggest a homemade food I can make for weight uh, gain? And then she goes on to say prescribed foods are not helping uh, even with puppy food. She's better in the winter when she doesn't run and burn calories. So for now, I'm no longer going to let her go for runs. That's sad. Um, uh, I feed her two cans of Hills Diet half can puppy for as well as putting one cup venison rice on her dinner, which is dry food, will five defenders help? Who weighs 40 pounds? Yeah, you know, I think the problem yeah. here, Sherry, is that we don't really know why she's yeah. absorbing her food. Um, I assume that that's what you're saying is you're feeding her, but she's not gaining weight. Yeah. You know, but there's so much information here that would really need to have a specific consult. I need to know what the stools are like, what her thirst is like. We need to, I mean, there's, it's complicated. Yeah. So I would say that if you're looking at something, this is just a generic answer because I, I, there's too many questions right now. I don't think the five defenders would, would hurt at all. Um, my suggestion would be more to look at something like lion's mane um, or chaga which both are shown to have have historical benefits for the gut. Right. Whether what's wrong with the gut is what these two mushrooms can help or not, I don't know. But we do know that mushrooms in general can help to benefit the microbiome. 
So, I mean, there are a lot of things that, you know, can be given as far as digestion boosters. And, you know, it might be that, you know, she has um, something, a disease called lymphangectasia, in which there is a problem with some of the lymphoid vessels in the gut and their ability to absorb um, fats and other materials. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, I, I, you don't mention any kind of vet workup, and there is a reason to go see a vet, and this sounds it like... Does. Uh, that test has showed no results as to why. Without being negative towards my colleagues, there are tests and then there are tests. And yeah. so it may be that a veterinary special GI specialist would be able to better yeah. define because there is obviously if I, mean, I don't know the specifics and, and everything, but obviously there's something wrong. And, and, and if the test didn't show what's wrong, that means that we didn't do the right test. Yeah. So uh, I don't mean to beg off the question. It's just too complicated. Yeah. And I'm not really here to give individual advice to pets. It's, I'm not really supposed to. But I think that lion's mane, Sherry, would be a good idea. I see that you take it yourself, so it would be fairly easy to give that. But, you know, digestion boosters, things like probiotics, good quality probiotics, digestive enzymes. There's a number of things. Are, are you giving enough fatty acids? You know, um, are, you know, is she getting enough fish oil and getting enough flaxseed oil and other sources of fat? You know, is she in a high carbohydrate diet? Does she maybe not digest carbohydrates so well and she needs to have digestive enzymes? And there's so many things. I do, I have done a lot of work in my career with digestive problems. Um, a lot, my, it's probably been my wheelhouse is digestive problems. But this is not, a, this is not a simple problem. But as far as mushrooms, I go lion's mane. And maybe do both of them, lion's mane and cordyceps, you know, cover all your, check all the boxes. Yeah. And get some probiotics in there. Yeah. Uh, we wish you luck, Sherry. That must be really frustrating to uh, watching your dog lose weight that way. Um, next question. Uh, B cell cutaneous lymphoma, uh, turkey, tail do uh, turkey tail dosing, or is there a better mushroom you would recommend? He's 180 pounds and a great Dane. Big dog. A yeah, big boy. Yeah, I think um, turkey tail is, is a good mushroom to use. I'm definitely going to want to use the pouch for this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, get out the calculator. <laughs> there it is. So um, 180 pounds. And I guess that'd be about 90 kgs, right? Close enough, 80 kgs. So at 80 kgs um, times um, 30 megs per kg, that's 2.4 grams of beta glucans. The um, remember that number. The the um, turkey tail has thirty percent beta glucans. So um, a half teaspoon of the turkey tail powder would have three hundred milligrams in it, and we would divide twenty four hundred by three hundred, and that gives us eight half teaspoons or four teaspoons a day, dividing that into two doses of two teaspoons twice daily. Awesome. Good job, Docs. <laughs> that was a... oh, you, you, you continually amaze me. Without You'll get good at it as well. Thank goodness for, for calculators. I don't know what I would do yeah. I don't know if I don't have enough fingers. But just your ability to like talk and type and add and figure all that stuff out. Um, you know, in the exam room, you know, you got to do that stuff yeah, very yeah. quickly about it because you yeah. got all these people out there waiting. What the hell is he doing? You know, he's count. I don't. I'm looking in the window. He's just counting on his fingers. What's that about? You know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got to get quick. <laughs> Back before they had calculators, huh? No. <laughs> no, you don't have a timer. You know. Yeah. Okay. Here's a multiple question one. Uh, hi, can you please remind me what the difference is between the human versus pet blends? Uh, is dosing the same? Would you say reishi would be the best mushroom to try to help for the 4th of July and anxiety? Great questions. So um, if you're talking about the pet capsules, um, they contain the exact same concentrates, quite, quite the exact same extracts as the human capsules. We don't have pouches for that are labeled for pet use that have single ingredients in them. We're going to be launching some pouches with multiple ingredients in them, but that's a little bit down the road. Um, so um, 
in terms of calming your pet for the 4th of July, um, which is the, um, the second part of that question, right? Um, I would look at a product that I've designed that we make, which are soft chews called Relax Mushroom Chews. And these relaxed chews contain lion's mane and reishi. They also contain tryptophan and theanine and calming herbs, and they're very effective. And they could be even more effective, especially for the kind of noise stresses that they'll get on the 4th of July, if you combine that with a decent dosage of some CBD. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great, great answers. And did you, uh, did you answer the question about the difference between the human and the pet? Sorry, I got, I got a little lost. I clicked the wrong button and you disappeared. So I was busy yeah. trying to come back. No, I did. That they're, they're basically, they're good. They're basically the same, using the same raw materials, just different sizes. Or different yeah, good. If you saw me, yeah, if you saw me making funny faces, it's because I hit a button and suddenly oh, yeah. I couldn't find my way good. back. I wasn't sure if it was something I had said that you were. No, it was just me, like so, suddenly realized I couldn't, I, I didn't know where I was. So yeah, I've been cool. sweet a couple times a day, actually. <laughs> you're cool. You're cool. <laughs> Lion's Bane <main> helps. <laughs> um, uh, Bridget has a question. Uh, she's also wondering um, will mushrooms decrease or eliminate fatty tumors? We get this every, every. Uh, well, fatty tumors are very, very common. I, yeah. have one on, I have one on my back. Uh, yeah. and one right here and um i've not found a solution to fatty tumors other than surgically removing them yeah. uh, so you're what sure go ahead and try the five defenders and maybe it will work every once in a while i hear someone say oh yeah the doctor recommended this and it, it took care of the fatty tumors and it turns out he recommended something that i'd used for years without any success for fatty tumors as well so <laughs> I just don't, I, I know that they're annoying to look at. You pet them and you feel that little jellyfish under the skin. But unless they turn malignant, which is very, very rare, they're really just cosmetic problems. They're not health problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, agreed. Yeah, agreed. Although, interestingly, uh, was it last week? You know, we get, when people leave a review on Real Mushroom site, I, we, I don't know if you get it too, Doc Rob, but I get a little ping on my phone that a, a review has been left and I read them, you know, and there's a lot of really, it's wonderful because we get, you know, on all the products, the human and the pet products. And um, it was somebody, uh, uh, a, a human that had a, a fatty lump that said, um, was able that uh, the turkey tail, uh, sw swerved, the turkey tail helped shrink it. So Good. Okay, this is the first time I've ever heard of a, of a, of a lipoma, uh, being shrunken with any kind of natural therapy. So, and who knows if it, it's worth a try. I don't want to be negative about it, but I don't want to give you false. Right. Either. right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I remain skeptical. And, uh, the person that was asking about, uh, the, the, uh, the reishi, uh, what's best for, uh, the 4th of July, apparently, uh, uh, the dog can't do chews because of the other ingredients in the chews. So would the would reishi and lion's mane be the best choice? Um, yes, among what we have available, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with the CBD. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Um, next question: I have a 13-pound Pomeranian with inoperable tumor uh, of in the inner thigh, the size of a wow, the size of a sweet potato. Um, dosing one quarter teaspoon turkey tail and turmeric daily for weeks. Should I increase the dosage? Uh, there's been no noticeable changes yet. 13 pounds, let's say that's six um, kilos. That would be a six times three. That would be um, um, what you doing over there? <laughs> so wait, right, that's six times um, 30 which would be 180 milligrams and um, a half a teaspoon of the turkey tail um, contains 150 milligrams. So I would increase the dosage, yes, um, of the turkey tail to um, half a teaspoon or even more, a full teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon twice a day if he's having problems accepting that much. Um, and I, I would do that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And 
Uh, good luck. <clears throat> good luck with that. I hope you hope you see some uh, movement of the size of that. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Must be oh, as well. Must be really hard on a, a dog that small to have a tumor that size. Yeah, yeah. a bad area. Um, <clears throat> next question: If you do the powder version of mushrooms, is the dose about one quarter teaspoon each time? I think I saw that somewhere. My dog is between sixty-five to seventy pounds. Thank you both for answering the question. Well, I just ask him really. <laughs> so, um, so let me just do the math then. I'm just going to do a wellness dosage here. Okay. I don't, I don't know what else it is. So um, we said, what is it? 30, 35 times five is equal to 175 milligrams. So um, yeah, if you were to do a half, a quarter teaspoon of the five defenders, it's probably a bit low. I would probably go up to half a teaspoon um, um, each time you give it daily. Yeah, and we'll just assume it's the five defenders because uh, we don't know what, what kind of powder you're using. Um, yeah, if it's, if it's some of the others, it might might need a little less or it might need just a little more, but that's approximately, and as we indicated early on in today's talk, these aren't drugs and the dosing doesn't have to be numerically precise. So I think you'd be fine there, but I think a little bit more for a dog that size for wellness would be good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, next question. I have a 58 pound dog who had subcutaneous uh, hemangioma lump removed four months ago with clear margins. Ultrasound and x-rays are still clear at four months. How many capsules of turkey tail should I give per day and for how long? Okay, so 30. So 30 times 30 is 900. Am I figuring that right out? 58, 60 tons. Um, so, and capsules of turkey tail, um, this is frustrating, all the different sized capsules. Yeah, and we don't know if it's the it's, human or the um, pet capsule. Yeah. So, um, you know, at, at at 60 pounds, we are at um, uh, about 25, 30 kilograms, and we want to dose it at, let's say, 10 mg. So that's about 350. So um, each capsule, if it's a half, if it's a half, if it's half a gram capsule, then that would contain um, 150 milligrams. So um, I would give one capsule twice a day of the turkey tail for a dog the size post-surgically with clear margins and no evidence and a benign tumor because hemangiomas are benign. And that's of the 500 milligram capsule? Or that would, yes, that would be at the 500 milligram capsule. So it would be three caps, uh, three about three capsules for the pet version, that's correct? Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Dr. Rob. Uh, yeah. And we've got time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, I have a dog that has recently been diagnosed with uh, irritable bowel disease. Is there a mushroom that I can give him that would help him heal? If yes, how much would I give him? He weighs just under 50 pounds. Yeah, I would, um, I would use lion's mane. Yep. And, um, I give about 250 milligrams of the beta glucans a day and the lion's mane is 25%. So that would be the same as a um, half a teaspoon of powder or um, two 500 milligram capsules a day or three 300 milligram capsules a day. Awesome. Yeah, um, for those that don't know, lion's mane, you know, most of us, when we think lion's mane, we think cognitive function and neurologic issues, but lion's mane was traditionally used for irritable bowel disease, for ulcers, uh, to support to support gut health. So uh, lion's mane is an excellent mushroom uh, for this. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I... I'm assuming this is from the, when we were asking, I, I don't know who this is connected to. Um, I don't know why all the, these all came up as Facebook user instead of people's names. Um, it's harder to track 
the 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 threads of the conversation. Yeah, very hard to track when when everybody says that they're Facebook user. <laughs> we don't know which uh, what this is attached to. Um, but yeah, I would probably start with the lion's mane if he's Mister Sensitive, and then follow up with the cordyceps, and then and then and finish up with the five defenders in terms of um, trying to stabilize a sensitive bowel. Yeah. Uh, hard to say what's wrong with it. Sometimes the use of a ginger, um, you know, you can get ginger root in capsules and getting that at the same time, or even taking a little bit of ginger root or ginger root powder that you have and putting like a quarter of a teaspoon in, in some water and syringing it into them can help with these sensitive dogs. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would start with that, and um, I would start with a low dose to begin with, and yeah, and take a look at my CBD. This must be the one that was concerned about the ingredients in the soft chews and the yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think the CBD yeah. um, tincture, which also has CBG in it, support will be very supportive along with the um, the reishi. If you want to reach out to me through the contact form, I can also suggest another product that doesn't have ingredients in it that would be offending, but has similar ingredients in it to the relaxed mushroom chews that might be helpful. Great. And then we're, we're at our hour mark, but we do have this question up. So let's go ahead and answer this one and we'll sign off. My, uh, my pup is in severe osteoarthritis pain. Is there a limit under these circumstances to how many mushroom relaxed pet shoes I can give her in a day? No, there isn't. Um, but I wouldn't depend upon the relaxed mushroom chews to help with the pain. We, when we talk about um, helping with pain, we talk about what we call a multi multimodal or multi multiple things that we use all at the same time for that. And we have arthritis pain is very difficult. Um, I know I experience it myself chronically. And there's a lot of different tools that we can use. And certainly the mushroom relaxed chews at one increment, but yeah. looking at things like CBD, looking mm -hmm. at things like acupuncture, um, looking at things like NSAIDs, looking at things like massage and physical therapy, all can be ways to help reduce that pain. When you say severe pain, it has to be concerned for the dog. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome. Well, <clears throat> what a great uh, Facebook Live this was. And my goodness, you're, uh, my brain would be like exploding if I were you, Doc Silver, from <laughs> all that all that calculation on the spot, like literally, like <laughs> not a real <laughs> under under so pressure. Challenging. Yeah. Well, you did you did great. And uh, again, you know, by next month's uh, Facebook Live, we should have a nice. Uh, administration uh, guide available probably before then. Uh, I'm sure. You know, and then we'll probably be asking you for feedback on is it helpful for you? What else could you use? You know, we want to make it as easy to um, to understand as possible so that uh, it's one less thing to worry about uh, mm -hmm. if you have a pet that, you know, if you're dealing with an issue. So um, we'll have. Yes. You. Yeah. Can I say something? There was one question we didn't yeah. get to. It's all the way at the very end. Oh, sure. From Irene Chan. And I think it's very important because she goes, how long should I give mushrooms yeah. for wellness generally? Yeah. And, and the whole point of what we're trying to convey here is that mushrooms really are a lifestyle supplement. And for right. the best of the best effect, you need to give them every day yeah. or five days a week, let's say, um, right. all the time. You know, and so wellness is something that you want to have all the time. Yeah. And so that's why we would want to continue to um, to promote wellness by for, through daily administration of these mushrooms. Yeah, uh, such a great point. And thanks for asking that question, Irene, because, yeah, giving mushrooms proactively when there's nothing wrong is a great thing to do lifelong. You know, you can start them as puppies and. Uh, and just make it part of their, their regular diet and supplement plan. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's always good to spend time with you, uh, Doc Silver. And again, Jordan, thank you so much for all uh, the help. Yes, uh, somebody asking about the replay. Uh, the replay is, uh, is available on all of our platforms, I think within minutes of when we finish up here. Mm. Uh, so, and then it lives on, uh, uh, it lives on YouTube as well uh, in the Real Mushrooms channel. So... Anyway, uh, did you want to say anything else, uh, Rob? 
Bye. Bye. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> yeah.